So we're very much working off of a skill set list just to make sure that we're all on the same page. And I'm going to be looking at vertex, edges, faces, and origins in this next section. So we're going to start with the cube here and make it really easy. I'm going to isolate the cube by pressing forward slash on my keyboard. What that's going to do is it's going to make everything else go away and we'll just look at the cube. And that is a toggle. So if I press and hold forward slash, I can go back and forth. What's up? I am not sharing my screen. I really am glad that you said something. <laughs> okay, cool. Let me go back here to that and make sure that I'm sharing screens. Gosh, that would have been terrible to do this whole session and not have it um, have it shared. Yep, nope. That would have been that would have been pretty icky. So I'm glad that you said something because I wouldn't. I don't have the time to re-record. Um, so what I was looking at before is this list, right? Um, and so the the words that I was talking about in terms of like mind-bending abstraction, I was kind of responding to these images here, and then this is the list that we're going from. Um, again, I was assuming that you all saw my screen. My bad. Okay, so we are editing. Uh, the 3D objects, and we're going to look at vertex, edges, and faces, understand how they work, look at the origins, understand how those work, 3D cursors, and then we'll get through these too uh, with, with time as long as it allows. Okay, so I had pressed the forward slash, which is just uh, next to the right shift key on your keyboard, and that's a toggle, so we'll go back in space and we'll isolate something. Now what we're going to do is come up here to the top right corner of our viewport. We've got a couple different uh, modes of looking at things. I want to talk about those really very briefly. So this first one allows us to see all of the objects in their wireframe mode. The next one allows us to see our object in solid mode. I'm just pressing and holding my middle mouse button and orbiting. The next one is showing us our object with lighting on it. So you can see that there's different kinds of light. We'll go over these a little bit more in the future. But I can click up here, and I can actually change this object to look like it's at nighttime or to look like it's in uh, day or overcast. But this is the standard one. And then the last one is our render mode. Now, since I have this in isolation, there's no lights. If I left click, or I'm sorry, if I use that forward slash, I can see that object again in a light lighted environment, but when I isolate the object, there is no light, so we won't be able to see it. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and keep with the wireframe, and I'll isolate this again, and so we can see this uh, hanging out here. Now, the reason why I'm here is because I want to talk about how these objects are made. Every single object is built off of a point in space. So I'm going to go ahead and head up to edit mode. So we have been, all of the last week's session or the last session, we were in object mode. Now I'm going to complicate things and I'm going to go into edit mode. For those of you who have been in Adobe Illustrator, this is very similar to like moving a just a square or a rectangle around your space with the black arrow or switching to the white arrow, the direct selection, and being able to select just those specific uh, points. And so I'm going to go ahead and select one of these points right now. In Illustrator, it's called a vector, right? Because it's an X and a Y point in space. But because we have both X and Y coordinates, but we also have a Z plane, the up and down plane of Z, we now move from a vector, X and Y, to a vertices, X, Y, and Z. So this point that I have selected has an address, if you will, on the X, Y, and Z location in this digital space that we're dealing with, this virtual space. So this vertex, a single, image or a single point in 3D space is the basic building block of 3D. The next set of building blocks comes when you have two vertex together. Now I'm in a mode that selects just vertex right now and you can kind of see that there's this gradient from one to the next as they're selected. Um, but when I have this one selected 
this vertex here and this vertex selected, they uh, form an edge between them. And if I head on up here, I see I've got vertex mode, but I also can go to edge select. Now, when I'm in edge select inside a, a Blender, I have the ability to kind of select each one of these edges. And just like before in other applications, I can press and hold shift and select them contiguously. I can deselect them by pressing and holding a command uh, control on a Mac or on a PC. So that is selection, contiguous selection, deselection, and a path of least resistance. So you can select everything in between those by pressing and holding shift and command or shift and control. Anyway, two vertex in space create an edge. If I have four edges in space, they create a face or a plane. This plane, if I look at it here, has um, it is the kind of face of our 3D objects. And so if mm -hmm. vertex is the kind of building block of all of 3D, a face is the building block of your object. And some people call faces of objects poly, polygons, mesh, uh, you'll use these words kind of interchangeably. But this is how 3D stuff works. Everything is built on a face with a vertex edge and um, face selected. So I'm going to get out of X-ray mode and go to ed or go to solid mode for now. And that's, I'm staying in the ed edit mode. I don't really want to leave that. But what I want to do is I want to show you some of the things that are going on with the move, rotate, and scale with just a face. And so if I want to move this face, what I'm going to do is just hit the G button, and now I can move just this face, just what's selected anywhere I want. I'm going to go to the edge select mode and just select one edge and hit the G button, and now I can move that too. It makes sense to kind of position your camera so that you can see your movement. Um, that, that's a, kind of an important thing. I'm going to hit Command Z a couple times just so that we're back to that original cube. Cool. Next, I'm going to just go to vertex mode. But instead of taking the time to go all the way up here and click on this, if you have your keyboard, you can switch between these modes by going one uh, across the top of your keyboard, two, you can see it's just turned from the vertex, the points, to the edges and then three, and now it's just got the faces. So if you look up here, one, two, and three correspond to vertex, edge, and face. Cool, so in vertex mode, I can do that same thing. I can grab things and move it around. When edge mode, I can grab things and move it around. I can also scale, so I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down. I just hit S to scale. And you'll notice that my cursor is pretty far away when I scale. If I'm really, really close, then I don't have as much kind of uh, control. The farther away my cursor is when I tap scale, gives me more options. I'm going to go to face mode, and then we're going to rotate this face real fast. You can kind of see that it, it just rotates based on your viewport view to a certain degree. I'm just hitting R to rotate. Now the other thing you can do is you can go into a roller ball rotate, so that's R, R, two R's, and now it will rotate kind of as though it's on like a, like a plane and you just kind of move it around. But I digress. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command and then press Z a couple times. Just undo that, get it back to its original cube. And I'm going to give you a minute. I would love it if you played for a second just to make sure that you can Go into an out of edit mode that you can go between these different views. And in edit mode, you can switch between vertex by clicking one, edge by clicking two, and face by clicking three, and select these things and be able to scale them, rotate them, or move them, which is S, R, and G, respectively.